All right, so today I'm going to use ray casting to make NPCs that shoot at enemies. And I'm going to use the, a beam for like a laser sight. So any moment, some zombies are going to pop over this wall. And then these soldiers are going to shoot at them. And here they go. So I thought that would be pretty cool. Let's go ahead and get a fresh world and we can build one of these soldiers. And then you can make as many as you want to fight your zombies or whatever monsters you have. So here's my fresh world. There's nothing in it. And I'm going to go to plugins. I'm going to go to build rig, R15 mesh rig. So I'm going to use an R15 because I'm going to use my characters animate stuff. All right, let's go back to home, collisions, bounce them to the ground, turn collisions back off. And let's rename him. Let's call him guard. There we go. If I can select that guard and then put some body colors on them so you don't get in trouble for having a NPC with no clothes and body colors are sufficient. And then let's go to toolbox. Oh, and I already looked up the gun mesh. So I think I'm going to use, I'm going to use this one right here. There we go. I'm going to rotate that so that it's in pointing position for my dummy. Is that right? That's a little bit crooked. Control Z, get the green. There we go. Perfect. All right, let's make it a different color too. Let's make it a little darker. Let's see, ooh, like, is that like a blue steel? And then maybe make this, uh, oh, that's black. Make this metal. Do I have a metal here? There we go. Yeah, that'll work. All right, now my collisions are off. I need to put a little Roblox handle in here, something that says handle for your tool. And then I'm going to also put another part for the laser sight. So I added this part here. And let's go ahead and with that part selected and the mesh selected. Now, you know what? I'm going to just put the tool in here. I was going to make a, I was going to make a model, but just go ahead and add a tool into your workspace. And now grab your mesh, push it into the tool, grab your part, push that in the tool and rename this part to handle. There we go. And now I want my handle to be in the middle of my mesh. So I'm going to get my position of my mesh. Control C under position, click on the handle. Here's position for the handle, control V to paste it. There we go. Now I'm going to make the handle small. All right, it just has to exist. It doesn't have to be very big. So I'm going to do 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0 0.1 for the handle. It's down here by the trigger. Let's go ahead and move that. Move that back, maybe down a little bit. Now you can adjust that really easily, easier than the grip position on the tool. That's why I make the handle so small and separate like that. All right, I'm going to do a control D on the handle so that I can make this other part here. And that's going to be the focus for my laser sight, which should really go above the, above the weapon, but that's all right. This is fine for here. All right. And let's rename that to, I'm going to rename that to the hole, like the hole of the gun. Cool. So let's weld those parts together. So it doesn't fall apart. Go to tool, hit weld constraint, go to tool again, hit weld constraint on the first weld constraint, go to part zero hit the mesh part one, hit the handle. And now on the second one, part zero, hit the handle part one, hit the hole. Now it's all welded together. So it'll be in one piece. All right. What else do we need? Let's make our beam and let's go right out of the hole for the beam, right? That's the whole purpose of the hole. All right. So we're going to do ATT for an attachment. There we go. ATT and I'll duplicate that control D. So we have two attachments. The first one, I'm going to do ATT zero. The second attachment, there we go. ATT one. All right. And now go to the hole again, hit the plus sign, add a beam. And on the beam, here we go. We have this attachment zero. You click on the space over here, click on attachment zero in your Explorer, and then do the same for attachment one. Now, if we click on attachment one, we pull that out. That's what our default beam looks like. 
So select beam and let's go ahead and make that red. There we go, red. And let's make it really thin like a laser. So on width zero down the bottom on the beam, I'm gonna hit a point one. And then width one, I'm gonna hit a point one. And then I'm gonna do this camera face, right? So that'll give it a little bit. The camera's going, wherever your camera is, the beam is gonna maximize its, um, its uh, visibility to the camera. It's gonna face the camera. All right, so that's pretty cool. Um, what else do we need? We need, uh, we need a sound, right? So let's go to our toolbox and go to audio. Let's get a gunshot. Gunshot. Look for something that's just a second. What's that? Nope. Killer beans, silenced. Ah, laser shot. Ah, that'll work. Here's a, what's this gunshot? That's not bad. Let's do that. There we go. I just drug it into the workspace here. And then I'll go sound. I'll take the tool. Inside the tool, I'm going to go to the hole and put the sound on the hole. If you put your sound on a part, like a bass part or an attachment, your sound roll off over distance is going to behave normally. If you just put it in the workspace or you put it on the tool, you might not get a natural roll off on your sound. So I put it on the hole here. All right, cool. We need a zombie too, right? We don't have a zombie. So toolbox, models, zombie. Let's do a drooling zombie. That way it's a Roblox thing, so you don't have to worry about like viruses and stuff. Some kid putting a virus in it. Where's my zombie? Oh, I'm not getting it. There we go. There's the zombie. And I'm going to make a folder for... Let's move them in front of our guard for our horde, right? So I'm going to put all the monsters in this folder. I'm going to say workspace, hit the plus sign, grab a folder. And I'm going to call this the horde, right? And then I'm going to put my zombie in there. Let me close my tool. Drooling zombie, push him in the horde, right? Maybe we'll make a second one too. Control D. We have two. And this is what I'm going to read in to find what find my enemies so you could do this with like players you could do this with other other players um, or NPCs but I'm gonna stick everything in this horde folder and use that all right cool so we're all set let's go ahead and get our tool and push it into the guard model boom now it's in his hand that's awesome that'll work um, let's go to the guard and add a script and this script is going to be called uh, let's say attack. All right, now we we aren't actually putting the gun up yet because we don't have our animation stuff on our guard, but that's all right. We're going to add that soon. Let's go ahead and get some code first. Let's do local char script dot parent. So that's our character, our guard character. We'll say local my HRP. That's the guard's HRP, right? We'll say char wait for child humanoid root part and then we'll say my hum for my humanoid char wait for child humanoid cool um, the origin is going to be the origin for my ray cast I am actually going to make the origin my HRP position right so I debated whether to do, to do it for the the pistol or for the humanoid root part. I just picked humanoid root part. All right. And now um, I need a, a distance of interest. Distance of interest. We don't want him being able to shoot a thousand studs across to get some zombie way, way out. And I need my parameters for my ray casting parameters. So I have ray casting parameters, new. And that's going to be like the filter list and stuff. Things you don't want to. Uh, pick up on your ray cast. All right. Now, remember, we had these attachments down here in the tool, right? On the hole, we had the attachment zero and attachment one. We only need access to attachment one. Um, and that's what we're going to use for our laser beam, right? So we're going to move attachment one around to wherever our enemy is. So we hit char, tool, hole, attachment one. All right. And now we need a random number generator because we don't want uh, our soldiers shooting 
too consistently, we want to put a little bit of randomization into our firing. So we'll do random new. And I'm going to use something called loop pauses. Loop pauses. So when we fire, we're not going to fire every update on the loop. We're going to fire like every 25th update or every 30th update because we're going to be running 33 updates a second. Right, so let me go ahead and randomize so that if you have multiple guards, uh, we're gonna have a slightly different fire time. So I'll say anywhere between 25 loops and 38 loops, um, we're gonna pass over without firing. And then I'm gonna count those loops. I'm gonna say loop count zero. All right, that's cool. You'll see what I'm gonna do with that. I need my sound, right? SND for sound, char, tool, whole, sound. All right, and then let's make a variable for our damage amount. I'm going to make it 34 so that my, um, my, my uh, guard can kill a zombie with three shots. All right, let's put some functions out. So I'm going to do a local function, fire. And I'll pass in the enemy humanoid because that's where the damage is going to happen. And um, we could just do this now, right? So we have the sound play for the shot. And if you had an animation on the firing animation, you put that here too. But now I'm just going to do ehum uh, take damage. And that's going to be the damage amount. Cool. And then I'm going to just do skeleton functions for this one right here, because it's going to be a little more in depth. I'm going to do a local function. I need to find the nearest humanoid root part. And then I'll put a distance in. That's the distance of interest. All right. So we're not going to use that globally because we're going to change the distance of interest as we find people who are closer and closer to us. All right. And I don't want to change that globally in the script. So what else do we need? We need something for a target, a function for targeting. Tar, oh, oh my gosh, their target. Ooh, and the target needs to have the enemy humanoid root part. Let me get rid of this so we have a little more space. And now I just need my update loop, and then we'll fill in these other things. Let's do my update loop now. Let's do a while wait. So this number right here, this wait is going to be 0 0.03 seconds about, right? So it's going to be like 0 0.029999 or something like that. Um, so that's why we need our loop pauses. We can't fire every iteration of the loop when we find somebody. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to check to make sure my humanoid has some health. Make sure my guard's not dead, right? So if health is less than one, then we're going to break out of this. I'm going to turn my beam off. My attachment one position is going to be vector three, new, zero, zero, zero. And if you'll recall, attachment positions are positions relative to their parent, which is the whole of the gun. So it's essentially going to make that beam disappear because the attachment's going to go back into the gun. And then I'm going to break out of my loop. And that's how you break out of while loops that run forever. It's one way of breaking out of them, right? You can make a condition to... All right, so I'll do a local closest, closest HRP. Let's do find nearest HRP, distance of interest, right? So that's going to be like 100. And then we're going to pass this in here. So it's going to have that distance local to the function. If we find a closest HRP, then we can go ahead and, we can go ahead and do stuff, right? We can target them. Cool. And the closest HRP is the enemy HRP. And we might not have a closest, so we'll have to do an else. If we have an else, I'm just going to turn my beam off, just like I did when I died up here. Boom. Cool. That's looking good. Let's go ahead and run it just to see if we got any errors now, because we already got a lot of stuff here. Sometimes you spell humanoid root part wrong or something like that. Let's go ahead and hit the play button. Let's go ahead and do view output so we can see if there's any output in here. Everything's looking good. Uh-oh, my zombies are going to kill my guard. So what I want to do is I want to go to my workspace, go to SimTech Gamer 7, 
copy animate before I die. There we go. I copied animate. And then I'm going to turn my game off. And now I'm going to paste that into my guard. So I have guard and paste into, I'm going to close this tool. I'm going to, I need to convert this to a server script though, because this is a local script, which works great for players, but not for things that live on the server like my guard does. So I'm going to hit this plus sign script. And I'm going to call this, I'm going to name it slightly different. I'm going to say anim. And M. So this is the one I made. This is the one I got from my player. So I'm going to open that animate up from the player, copy everything below it down to play emote. Just drag that into Anim. Cool. And now I need all the code in animate. Control A to copy or to select all. Control C to copy it. Go to Anim. And then we'll do a control V here to paste it. All right. So I need to remove this code right here. Set up emote chat hook. It's always around seven, seven something. It's, uh, I, I sometimes I just do a control F, whoops, control Z, control F to search on it. But let's go ahead and delete that. That way it doesn't, our, um, our little, our little guard guy doesn't try to access the chat window and then get errors because he's not a player. Cool. So I can close that. I can get rid of the animate that I copied in. I don't need it anymore. And now let's go ahead and play it. Well, we, we just did. We checked it. Everything's running fine. Let's go ahead and add some more code. Let's start with our find nearest humanoid root part. All right. Mm, let's see, we'll do, we need to put like a variable here, local. I'm going to call this closest HRP and then initialize it to nil. Then I'm going to go through V and I in pairs. I'll do workspace horde. Remember that's where all our monsters were. I'll say, uh, get children. So that's going to get everything in that folder. Let me do a do. There we go. And originally I had players in here. You could do that with players. Game.players uh, colon get children. It works the same. All right. So let's check to see. Oops, I spelled that wrong. Let's check to see if this is going to be the items in the folder. This is just going to be a counter. It's going to be like one, two, three, four. So let's check to see if there's a humanoid root part associated with that V, right? Make sure it's not, a, make sure it's a zombie. We'll do find first child, humanoid root part, humanoid root part. And then we'll say if HRP, then let's find the distance. We'll do it, we'll call it temp distance. We'll find the distance between the HRP we're looking at now position and our origin, which is our, there we go, which is our humanoid root part, our, our guards humanoid root part. And then we'll take the magnitude of that to get the absolute distance. Cool. And then we also need the humanoid just to make sure that it's not dead, right? Because we don't want to target dead things. Humanoid, right? So let's do an if temp distance is less than the distance and the humanoid exists and the humanoid health is greater than zero. Make sure he's not dead. Then we'll say the distance of our distance is going to be temp distance. So this is our local distance of interest. So we found something that's pretty close. Now we're only going to look at things that are closer than that. All right. And then we'll say closest HRP equals the HRP. So it's going to keep getting a closer and closer and closer uh, humanoid root part. Uh, what happened here? Am I off on my formatting? Oh, I am. Control Z. I am missing an end. There we go. Let's check this out. Format document. Perfect. All right. So down here at the very end, the closest humanoid root part is going to be returned. I don't know why I forgot to do return. Return closest humanoid root part. Cool. Now let's just target our guy, right? So we found the closest humanoid root part. Now we just got to target him and then we're done. Then we can try him out. 
All right, so we didn't do ray casting yet. We're going to do ray casting in the targeting. So we'll say local stop. So that's going to be the stop part of my bean. EHRP, which is the enemy HRP, position minus our origin. And then I'm going to take the unit vector. Whoops, unit. There we go. Multiply it by the distance of interest. So we're going to shoot out this far for our ray cast not our beam yet we're going to set the beam soon this is going to be for our ray cast i think i misspoke and then we'll do params filter descendant instances so we add our filter table do we have a filter table we did not add a filter table let's add it down here all right we don't we can do it like this we can say what do we want to filter i'm going to filter my character and everything that's underneath it, right? The descendant instances. Cool. And then we'll do params. What type, whoops, what type of filtering are we going to do? Blacklist or whitelist? So blacklist is, is an exclusion list. So we'll say enum, rate, cast, filter type, blacklist. Cool. Now let's go ahead and cast our array. So we're going to get a result back. We'll do workspace ray cast so i'm going to do my i want to do my origin i want to start and then go to the stop and then do my params that should work we'll say if result and result instance that's the thing we hit the parent exists and the result in oops control z control shift there we go instance dot parent find first child that's a humanoid i'm going to break that line up hold on a second then let's go and put this down here there we go so we want a result we want a result where the instance has a parent like if you're dying or something the parent might get removed and if that is the case and all that's working well we're going to find a first child that's a humanoid so we're going to ensure that it's a character that we've actually targeted right and then we don't want to fire right away but we do want to set the att1 world position to our result position right so that's going to light them up with the beam now we're going to check to see if our loop count is greater than our loop pauses remember because we're not going to fire every loop iteration then we'll do our fire if that's true uh, what do we need to pass in oh we need a humanoid but we only have a an ehrp so we're going to go to the parent of the humanoid root part then go down to the humanoid level then we will reset our loop count to zero and then down here we're going to make sure that our loop count iterates plus equals one. And then we are done. This should work. If I get an error, I'm going to be mad. No errors. Looking good. All right. We have a pretty slow, uh, we have a pretty slow firing, but that's all right. Let's go ahead and get a couple of those. Let's get a couple of soldier guys, right? Control D, Control D. And then let's make our horde a little bigger just to make this interesting. Let's see, we've got our zombies. I'm going to copy those. Control D. We'll move these over here. Control D. There we go. Maybe copy all of them. Control D. Move that back. Do you think three soldiers can take them out? I don't think they can. But let's try. Um, let's add another soldier. Control D. There we go. Play. And you could do respawns. You could do a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, there we go. I think they're going to win. Do we have any living guards? Oh, we have one guard alive. Everybody else is dead. All right, so that's pretty cool. So good luck with that. Let me know if you have any problems. And uh, I will see you in the next video.